Hi guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I just thought I'd come on quickly and just quickly say where we are with this, you know, um, bit face to face rather than just my hands on the bench. So, um, sorry about the camera work here as well, it's a bit weird because I've got, I've got a very, very large window on my landing, and as you can see the sun is glaring through on the landing behind me. i got br very bright light here, and if I shut the blinds, it, that is just overpowering that, and I don't have blinds on that window, so, oh shut up. Right, so um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say this is obviously part seven and the last couple of parts, five or six, things tended to kind of slow down a bit because we've been just working with stuff that we need to sand like these bloody things. They're always a pain um, in takes and the fact they're so small makes it awkward as well, but they're all painted and done now. They've been painted for roughly 24 hours, so we're ready to mask those now with those masks we made. Uh, again, that was a bit slow, I'm sorry, watching that in part six probably drove you crazy. But I just wanted to make sure that you saw my the method in my madness. Um, and now in part seven, we're going to see if it works. I've seen a reason why it won't. I think my biggest error was using this Mr. Hobby tape. As you can see, the Tamiya tape is a, a sort of more of a yellow or sort of more of a, a yellowy brown colour. The Mr. Hobby tape is a bright yellow and this stuff is a lot more sticky than this um, and I find less forgiving as well. I don't like, it's very unusual for me to say I don't like a Mr. Hobby product but I prefer the Tamiya tape to this. It's also a lot thinner. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're both about the same price. Um, so it's just, you know, it's what you like really. But uh, I think this is probably better tape for holding things together when you're building because uh, I think it's probably stronger and as I say it's more sticky but um, I think for actually masking the Tamiya tape is far superior and it also cuts nicer as well um, so and that's just my opinion so basically yeah part seven is we're going to start getting going now because the, in the intakes are done we've done all this bloody sanding of all these sink marks on these wings and everything so, oh, drew me around the bend honestly um, but that's all done now, it's all nice and smooth. Just to give you a close up, you can see there what it looks like. It's, you know, there's a lot of, lot of different colors of Mr. Surfacer in there. I've used gray, white, and black. And, uh, and the reason I do that is so that obviously, if you put the black down first, and then you sand it, you know you need more. If you put more black on top, it becomes difficult to see. So what you do is you put gray on top, and then if when you sand it, everything is black, you know you've gone through the gray, to the black so you know you're okay then use a bit of white and if you end up seeing some white then you know you and you basically keep going until you completely remove the, the the coat you've just put on and then you know that everything is flat and then if you really want to go to town you can spray on a thin layer of mr surfacer and sand that out but uh, this will be getting a coat of primer anyway because of all these areas with filler and stuff and it's great big seam down here but that's all sanded out and lovely now and Yes, uh, it's, it's coming out quite nice. On the inside of the Bombay here, that's all done. Obviously painted white. I did my trick in here on the ridgy parts. I did the trick in there with the um, Mr. Surfacer and then uh, le leveling thinners on a cotton bud and rub it out of the, the, uh, the grills and everything. So basically, um, all ready to go. We've got those huge steps in there. I'll talk more about that when we do the Bombay um, that I want to get rid of, but it's just too much work. And I think the bombs are going to hide most of it anyway. So let's get press on and get these um, get these things masked up. And then once these are masked up, we can glue them in. And then we can get our main parts glued together. And then we're home. We're there. So uh, really start pushing forward then. Okay, so after all that work, making these masks, they don't fit. I should have tried the paper templates first, shouldn't I? But basically... What they're telling you to do in the instructions is use these paper templates to mark out where the um, where your, your, your line's going to be between your white and your camo. Now, the other thing I think they've got wrong is they could say this is the top template and this is the bottom template. You can see I've got the bottom one here cut out. And the reason I think they've got it wrong is because when you look at the intake on the front, this is the top, this is the bottom. This leg is longer here than it is here. And when you look at the top and bottom templates, they've got that leg longer on this one 
which means I think this is actually the top. So I think they've mistaken the made a mistake there. So if we consider this is the top and we fit this in here, okay, and we get it to go in into that corner, it's difficult to show you because it won't stick down obviously because it's not adhesive, but basically if I get it to go in there so it's sat in that corner properly there, all right, and I hold that with my finger. To turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. When we look at this end, hold that in. Look at this end. When we tuck this end in, it disappears right down into the. Now I'm not sure if that's right or wrong, but it, it just disappears down into the intake. So if we assume this one is the bottom, okay, and we put it here on the bottom side here, it doesn't make any difference. It's still the same. So I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm assuming that the camouflage goes deeper into the outside. I don't know. We just make it look right, I guess. But um, if I hold that there, I curl that round in. As you can see again, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. If I hold that there, you can see when I push that in, it just disappears down inside the um, inside the intake. So you've got the front edge lined up there. Okay, so a bit annoying that. So I'm going to stick a pair in and see how they look. Um, it's not easy putting them in, I can tell you that. But uh, we'll see how they look and then we'll go from there, I guess. But um, yeah, this, I'm sort of tempted just to do this myself. This is all a bit of a faff, really. It's not working out at all well. So, I'll get one of these off, get it stuck in, then I'll come back and show you how it looks. Right, so that's in there now, and I've removed the, the piece of tape that was holding the two together. So now I should be able to pick off this front edge, like so, and leave the mask behind. And there we are. So you can see now that we've got that line there to work to. Just push that down. So you can see now this front this front line is the line we've got to work to where the camouflage is going to go. And that looks a little bit deep to me. But um, let's put the top one in and see how the bottom one and see, see how it looks. And there we go. You can see it kind of works. A little bit of a step on the front there, a little bit of a step inside there. But we can always go round and clean that up. So now we've got to add some tape or something inside there, some cotton wool, whatever. And um, I put that inside my neck. Why is my finger orange? Um, so basically, yeah, um, there we go. So they do kind of work, but it's a bit of a faff. It might be easier just to do it yourself. I, I don't know. Maybe you can buy aftermarket masks. I'll have a look at Hannah's. But... Um, there we go, so that's that done. So let's get on with the other side. Right, so all done now. We've got the tape in there, all cleaned up around the edges. Put some extra bits of tape in, just to make sure they're all sealed up. And then I've got a piece of foam there in the outer one. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just get some of this Viejo um, liquid mask and just go over these joints in this masking tape. Making sure I stay away from the white. It's just to sort of make sure it's all sealed in, really. It's quicker to do this now than have to mess around with overspray and stuff. And I'm going to bang some down in there and let it go into that foam. Just in case there's a gap down there. And I can see there could be a gap down the bottom there as well. And what this will do, it'll could, anywhere there's a gap in the tape, it'll capillary in where the gap is, which is where you've got some there, which is where the um the paint would have capillaried in. So that's what we've got to try and avoid is getting it on the white. Okay, so that's that. That'll just stay there sealed in. At the end of the day, if we do get any go under, it's just a this simple, you know, bit of white paint on a brush, touch it all in. But um so I've touched that there, look. Get that off. D 
Just run that in there and I'm going to run some again down on the edge of that foam. Just in case, and it'll also dry in there and help to lock that foam into place. There we go, and we just got to hope and pray, because this is going to be on here a while, that when we take it off it doesn't pull all the white paint off. It shouldn't do. The white paint's 24 hours old. The parts were washed, it's all been sanded, there's missed a surfacer under it, so we should be fine. And there we go, that's that done. We'll get some under there. That's that done. So happy with that. I'm uh, going to put a little bit more in there. If you notice I'm using the back end of the brush, I've n I've yet to find a way to use a brush with this stuff and not have it clog up because it sort of dries from the inside out. So you'll find you wash your brush off, but it's all gunged up inside it. So let's get some more in there. Sod it. Let's go for it. So I tend to... Uh, not use brushes in this stuff. I prefer the uh, Mr. Hobby mask to this one, but I'm running a bit low, so I'll just use it for this. There we go. So that'll dry and that'll be all nice and sealed in. There we go, all sealed in. I'm confident now with that like that that we're uh, we're going to be fine. Okay, so that is just basically my guarantee to make sure we don't get any paint bleed. And having said that, now we'll probably get paint bleed. You can see it's soaking into that foam, and I'm ending up with gaps. So I'm just going to fill those gaps in. There we are. If we need to, we can go over it again, but uh, that'll do us for now. Before we forget, we need to get these um, compressor blades glued in. So basically they're numbered on the back, one, two, three, four. So the way it goes is one, two, three, four from the, the left side. So as the plane is stood on the ground from the pilot seat port side, left side, one, two, three, four. So basically that is the top so that is number one, okay, because it goes like that. So that's one, two, three, four. And you can see on the back of these, they've got numbers. So that one's going to go in like that. Okay, and then we're just going to put a drop of extra thin in there. I guess we need to put quite a bit in there just to make sure they are welded in place. In fact, what I probably should have done was remove some paint from the back. Just make sure they're properly welded in. So on here I'm going to get a stick and just remove some paint from there. And then three and four. I don't know if you saw that then, but that is what happens with extra thin. You have to be so careful. It just dripped off the brush. There we go, that's that one in. It kind of doesn't want to sit flat, that one. A bit strange. I think we may have to sand a touch off the side of these because I think they're going to fumble when we put them in. They're going to sit in here like this. I 
Now they're okay, they foul at the top. Nope, they are fouling. So it's, yeah, what we'll have to do is we're just going to sand just a touch off the side of those. We'll let them dry first. And then we'll just sand, sand a touch off because they are sitting just proud and it's very tight in there between the wheel bays and the bomb bay. So we'll let that go off and I'm going to go and do a bit of work on the Land Rover and then I'll be back. So the second part of part seven, I might have dirty finger now, so I'll apologise up front. Right, see you in a minute. Right, I didn't go and work on the Land Rover after all. I decided to get these engines glued in and I can clamp up this bottom scene and let that dry while I'm working on the Land Rover. So just removing some material from the sides of those engines. Like so. And I've just had a comment. I've just released part four. I've just had a comment, a guy saying he didn't put enough weight in the nose, he doesn't know what to do. And what I've suggested is if he hasn't glued the nose to the wings yet, if you look, you've got a wall down the side here on the um, entrance hatch, so you could drill down through here. Go look at where that is. You could drill sort of here. Okay, drill a hole down through there, go right the way through down the side, drill into the back of the nose, the front bulkhead, and get the weights in there. So that's what I'd do. Um, but uh, yeah, so now we can get these and look at fit them into the wings. I think Jess is about to start barking. So this one is for this side. Here we go, let it just drop straight in now. We need to make sure we've got little tabs in there and then little squares in there, so need to make sure that's all aligned that can fit in just so that you can see you've got a bit of play and what I'm worried about is when you put the top wig on it can do this and I don't know how you'd get it back out so that's what I'm gonna do is clamp this in place and glue it now in fact what I'm gonna do is I wonder if I can get a peg on there yes I can that will hold that. And then I'm going to get a drop of extra thin in under here. That should capillary along. If we can just get that to sort of bite in place. Then that should do us. No, not that way round, Nigel. <laughs> Idiot. I do the same here. Get a clothes peg on this one. Clamp it in place, just nudge it back a touch. I must say the fit of these intakes is incredibly good. So, so far, here we are now, part seven, we're really cracking on with the build, and my only complaint, well, two complaints, is the sink marks, which is only to be expected with Airfix, and the, um, <clears throat> this, those gear bay, which I've still got to do something about gluing that in. Um, so now we can do, while that's all together, we can just test fit this on. for that together look at that it's just fallen together itself it's so nice and you can see the fit on those intakes is just incredible it's beautiful really really nice well done Airfix and uh, it's going to be a simple case I'm going to put a line of Mr. Servicer in there when it's all dry and then just sand and sponge <laughs> it's just that'll be it it's not going to be any work at all really really nice I don't know why that side's lifting. That's something we can look into. It's springing up on something. But it does just go together, so it's, it's not such a problem. So, yeah, lovely. So I'm going to let those intakes dry in that position. So take this upper wing off. Oh, by the way, that's the sponge I used in the intakes. It's just ordinary, sort of like you get in packing material or whatever. 
So we'll let those go off. And what I'm going to do is some of this thicker stuff here. Just run some of that down there. And let that go in and see if it can bite something. If there's anything there to bite. <clears throat> it should have run down the bottom. In fact, I'm going to put some more in there, put some extra thin in. Just in the bottoms of those engines, or just intakes, just to make sure they're solidly fitted because the last thing you want is for them to move or that seam to crack when you're uh, when you're sorting the seam out. And you notice I put the clamps on first. If you glue it and then clamp it, you'll get the glue oozing out and then you'll have the soft edge to, to deal with because the solvents attacked it and you'll have all sorts of issues. So there we go. So I'm going to put some more glue in there and let it run down in the joint. And we get some more in that side there. Somebody's also asked to see this part next to the B-52. So I don't know, I'm going to film that. <laughs> I'll have to put them on the patio and go and film it from upstairs. Anyway, we will get there. So uh, that's that. So I'm going to let that dry and now I am going to go and work on the Land Rover. And uh, I want that to be absolutely solid to make sure it's gone in really nice and welded in solid. So that peg's starting to come off. Also here, make sure the peg is right on the edge. Um, it's a standard mistake people make, modellers. They, they'll, they'll, like on a wing, they'll put a peg here to hold it together and what happens is because your wing halves are like this, if you like, when you put a peg here, you do that. You, you squash it and then when it dries, you end up, instead of having this shape, you have this shape and you end up with sunken tailplanes and stuff. Ask me how I know. <laughs> a lot of these tips that I give you are from mistakes I've made. So anyway, let's, um, let's go do some work on the Land Rover and I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are. This is a few hours later and this is something I should have done earlier so it could have been drying and then I could have gone and put the top wing on. But this is now the evening. I've just made the catch-up video and, and uh, yeah, come to look at this. Now, I've been looking at how to strengthen this nose gear bay because obviously all it's got is the area of the walls actually holding it down. And you can see I've put some plastic strip around there. Um, so what I've done, we've got this this leg that goes up the front, I'll quickly move that clamp over, you can see there's a leg there that goes up the front and then it adjo adjoins this leg here. So obviously that's going to be quite a strong point. So what I've done is I've packed plastic card in behind you. You can see the top is actually stepped out. So I've packed plastic card in behind there um, and a piece of plastic card there. And I've just got it clamped there now drying. So it's actually got this kind of effect now. So instead of just having a, a breaking away effect, it's going to have a shearing effect. So it's going to make it much, much stronger. So uh, there we go. Um, there may be people that are going to say, you don't need that. Well, I would ask, how do you know? Have you had your model sat on the shelf for two years? Has your undercarriage bay broken off? You know, um, so that's what I'm doing. I just want to make it strong. It is, it's not a light model. It's got some nose weight in it. So we need to be... Uh, considerate of that. Um, and I also had an email today from a, I won't, it's from Dave, I won't say his full name. He said that I need to look at the main undercarriage bays because there could be an issue with the actual location of the undercarriage where it fits in um, and may well put a lot of stress in that area. Now I'm just looking here it looks like everything goes into the undercarriage bay roof. The main undercarriage is going into that slot there, so that's going to be fairly strong. But it, the same as the front, it is all pushing up on that wheel bay. But I think that wheel bay is going to be pretty tight up against the wing. So um, what we could do, um, just to sort of help, is we could 
pack out some plastic card on there just put some lumps of plastic card in there until it's actually touching the wing and that'll give it a bit of strength we could put some plastic card across onto this spar if you want to to make sure it's nice and strong um, you know you can do all sorts and again people will say you don't need it I will ask how do you know um, you probably don't need it to be honest but I can't put the because I've got this clamp on but I've got a feeling that that area there comes up very tight against this area here on the on the upper wing um, what we could do is put a couple of lumps of blue tack on there fit the upper wing squeeze it down see how thick the blue tack gets squashed down uh, put some um, foil or something on top of it so that it doesn't stick to the upper wing see how thick the blue tack is. I'll, I'll show you when we come to do it and then we can see what sort of thickness plastic card we need and just put something slightly thinner just so that if it does break it'll just and then just sit on that upper wing surface but um you know we're not going to be playing with it and moving it around it's just you know uh, i'm sure you all know if you've been plastic modeling for years over the years the glue joints do become more brittle um and that's what i'm concerned about so that's what i'm talking about there <coughs> excuse me i've just noticed we've got some blind holes here as well so obviously they are planning some future kits because they're not telling us here to drill them out at all before we fit that and they haven't told us that we have got to drill some holes out in the exhausts I see here some one millimeter holes and they are for the these supports that these ECM plate things go on so um that's something else I need to check as well because I need to make sure I'm using the right ones for the version that I'm going to be making because I'm not going to be using the decals out of the box uh, I may even do this as XH558 who knows so anyway let's um let's just go from there right so uh I had a look at the undercarriage and I think we're going to be okay um the main as I say the main gear goes into here so we can glue that to the lower wing and the um and the actual undercarriage bay itself and what I've done is I've just put some screw glue around these rear corners just to improve the or increase the actual glued area what we could do as well if we wanted to it's just to make sure it's just go in and get some more glue down these edges and make sure they're all glued in nicely also make sure it's glued there um, and also in between all those holes where the doors go because obviously the glue won't capillary in where there's a gap so we can go around there make sure all that's glued in nice and solid again glue this in here make sure there's glue in there and down the front down in there there we go so i think that's going to be absolutely fine um as i say make sure it is all nice and solid because it is quite a weighty model i looked at putting some blue tack on here it looks like there is a bit of a gap between the wing certainly in this area back here and what i don't want to do is go and pack it out and end up with a bulged wing so i think we're just going to rely on that i mean if you really are fussy you could put some plastic card across here onto that spar that would increase the area um but I think really, I think it's going to be absolutely fine as it is. So, I mean, if you want me to... No, we're going to be fine. Um, this is all dried now, so you can see we've got a nice strong joint in there where the uh, where the end of carriage, carriage bay is drawn in, uh, pulled in. I can see that's pulled back a little bit. I'm not worried about that because um, basically it does nothing. So it's all going to fit together beautifully. And we're good to go. So we're checking now that everything here is nice and flush. We've got no bits sticking out. Check around the intakes is all clear. No nibs or nubs or anything. I think I saw something earlier on here. One of these wings had a nib on it. Nope, must have cleaned it off. Uh, no, there's, there's a bit of something there. So now's the time to check that we joints are going to be nice and clean. And we're good to go so we can take the upper surface again check there's no horrible ridges or lumps or bumps or anything make sure everything's nice and smooth you've got no flash anywhere no sprue nibs sticking out no bent bits of plastic that are going to affect anything and no everything is nice and we're good to go so that is literally just going to drop on there and that's it job done so what we can do here is 
get a couple of those pegs and clamp down there or what we could do is apply some glue to the edges of these intakes first and then glue them afterwards the trouble is then we're going to get the oozing problem but I don't know this one here for some reason this is being held up by something but it just pulls down easily so I don't know what's quite what's going on there it's like it's a bit lopsided may end up with a Vulcan that sits <laughs> sits with one tip closer to the ground than the other we shall see but um, it's probably a bit of warpage in the plastic you can see when it's all pulled together it looks nice it looks too thick there when you pull it together it's nice it's not like it's pulling it out of shape it's pulling it into shape so there we go a bit weird that it's actually flexing the bottom as well this could be where we had the problem with the undercarriage bay not being level maybe it, because the bottom is twisted who knows we will soon find out when we put the undercarriage in and it's like this so um, let me have a think about this. Right, so I've had a think about it and I've realised that all these spars and everything inside, they all do contact the top of the wing. So what we're going to do is put some glue on here, on all these areas and in these holes here, and then clamp it all together and let this set and do its work and then we can work on the outside afterwards. So I've got the Revell contactor here, had to clear the nozzle out, a bit of 0 0.3 wire will do that. So you need to get it on here and Get it done fairly quickly and don't tell me it's blocked already i've literally just gone downstairs to see the postman bloody hell it's blocked again already this is ridiculous <laughs> it's literally been like that for about two minutes so I'll grab my 0.3 wire again that's not 0.3 wire oh. okay so i've been very very silly um You've missed a load of footage because what I did when I was get clearing this stupid Revell contactor nozzle, I coughed. So I said, excuse me, turned the camera off, I thought, and that was it. Now the camera's above my head. I can't actually see what the camera's seeing. So I just, here's my hand. I reach up and switch it on. Well, what I've been doing is switching the camera off during filming and switching it on when I'm not filming. So, for instance, the last 47 minute long video was basically me dealing with some bill paying. <laughs> so, and it was just this, you just see this and nothing happening. So, um, right, what have I done? So when you last saw me, I had the contactor blocked. So what I did, I got the contactor freed. I went around all those spars and then in the in the four divots around here, put it all together and pegged it all together. OK, I then realised that I had a massive, tw well, not a massive, but a twist in the front of the fuselage. So everything's clamped down. So it's all held in place. While that was drying, I've come along and I've gone in with um, Mr. Cement S, the Mr. Hobby glue, because it's got a bigger brush. And I've gone round and I've glued all these areas of the Bombay. And I've explained that on one side here, we've got a tiny gap between the Bombay sidewall and the roof. And on this side, we don't. So there's obviously some sort of issue there. Something's just holding it off. But I can't, with all the strength I've got in the world, I can't clamp it together. So it's probably one of these spars or something is holding it off. But not going to worry about that. We're going to be going around all these seams with Mr. Servicer anyway, and then going in and with the cotton bud because I want to, as you as you know, I want to get this sort of solid one piece look to it so that when we put washes in it doesn't just go straight into a crevice and and it just accentuates a great big join um somebody did comment that you're not going to see most of this anyway once the bombs are in hey ho i will say uh, i mean some people comment why are you doing this we're well, not going to see this why are you doing that you have to remember when i'm making these videos um there are people watching this who may have never built a model in their life or have built one or two and want to know how to get rid of seams they may not be building this actual model, they may be building a bloody T90 tank, but what I've done is shown them the process of going in in complicated areas where you don't want to be removing detail and removing your, your Mr. Surfacer with a cotton bud and alcohol or whatever. So that's that's why I do it. I also, myself, my own ethos is when I'm making models, I like to um, enjoy the actual model making. So... I don't really worry whether you're going to see it at the end or not. I get satisfaction from achieving a nice, 
a nice finish, a nice joint or whatever. So if you look back, um, if you're on the floor remodel site, if you look back when he did a, a, a group build or a, a SIG group or something, I built a 30 second scale Phantom uh, E in, from Tamiya and I did a hell of a lot of work on that. And I even scratched, but you know, you've got the little blow off doors in the bottom of the hull, in the bottom of the fuselage for the, uh, to allow pressure out of the um, engine chambers when they're landing. I actually had those open and I scratch built engines so that you could look up inside and see the engines. And that's how crazy I get sometimes. So um, there we go. So that's uh, that's that. Um, so that's what we've done there. And and I'll be doing the same again with the white Mr. Servicer. And we'll go around and do everything the same as we did with the little bits and pieces here. So then what I did was clamp this together at the back and glued this down. So that's all held in place. And then I just realised that Whenever, when I take this rubber band off, this front end just wants to twist. It wants to do that. Okay, it wants to twist away from itself. Now, I know that when the front fuselage is glued on, it's going to hold everything solid. Um, but in the meantime, it's got quite a lot of pressure to hold it down. And I don't want to be having any of these seams around here cracking. So I've cut a piece of plastic card. It's 34 mil diameter. Cut the slot out the centre. Glued that on the front. You can see it's clamped there now and drying. Um, and that is basically giving the full surface area under there to stop it, stop it trying to twist apart. So it makes the model nice and strong while we're building it. And also I know that nothing's ever going to crack because nothing's going to shift that. So, um, so there we are. Uh, again, people will say, oh, you don't need to do that. You're overcomplicating things. I want to do it. So I'm doing it. There we go. <laughs> um, so there we are. So it may be that the twist in the fuselage was the reason I had the problem with the nose gear bay. Um, so I don't know, maybe maybe when we put our leg in there, it's going to end up coming out on an angle. We shall see. I don't think it will, but uh, we shall see if it does. We'll just sand the leg until it sits vertical or, or perpendicular to the wings. So there we are. Um, that's what we've done. And all these pegs on here are all clamping that spar that's inside. This is just holding the tips down where those pegs are. Um, but this is just clamping the, the spar area onto the, you know, we're holding the wings together. So we're basically gluing the upper wing to the spar and the, the spar to the lower wing. So it's all sort of sandwiched in there. And it's very, very strong. It's quite weighty with all these pegs on, obviously, but it's very, very strong. Uh, I've also got these intakes pegged here. They're not glued yet. I've just got them held in place just so when it, it's sort of curing with those closed up. And then we're going to go around the all edges and glue everything up when this is all gone solid. OK, so we did it again then. As I was speaking to you, got to the end of the video and it's reached itself off. So, um, yeah, just 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 to say, really, got all the clamps on. Going to leave it a few hours now to go hard. I've got a few chores to go and do. And then I'll, uh, I'll see you all back later on this afternoon. Bye for now. Right, so hopefully we've sorted things out now. I've bloody <laughs> reloaded the phone again. I must get out of my camera. Anyway, so um, this has all gone off now, so we can start to get these pegs off. So we'll get the pegs off, and it should all stay in one piece, hopefully. Clamp out of there, get that peg out of there. Pegs out of there, here we go. I'll leave the rubber band on the front. The front here because that's going to help hold it together while it cures. I'll make sure the rubber band's not touching the glue joint, otherwise it'll capillary around and onto there. So we've got a lovely seam there. Sorry, that was glue. This is the one that isn't glued. So we've got a lovely seam there, and we've got a lovely seam there, and that's all ready for uh, for gluing. So what I'm going to do is start by putting some. Yeah, we'll use the cement S because we've got more glue to go in there. So we'll let that go in. Get that in there and let it really do its thing. And then we can get a peg on there and hold that together. Lovely. Right, so we'll do the same on this one. Make sure I'm doing the right side. The fit is so good, I can't see which side I've glued and which side I haven't. So. glue capillary in. We want a lovely strong joint there so we can sand it and work on it and not have it fall apart on us. If I 
I think I'll put a couple of pegs on this side because this is the side that wants to spring apart. In fact, I'll put a couple of pegs on this side. And you know what? I think I'm going to leave it to dry. We'll leave it to sort of bite and cure a bit. Get some glue in the ends there. Get some in the end of there. And I think I'll let that bite and dry and then we can work on the rest of the wings later. But you can see here we've got no pegs and you can see the fit along that leading edge. It doesn't even need gluing. It's perfect. Um, this side has got a tiny, tiny gap, as you can see. So we go up to where it splits off. We may be able to open that joint up a bit. This is a, now because the wing's so solid, it's not helping. But generally, with wings, if you squeeze them in the middle. You can actually squeeze them in the middle and make them open up and it'll allow you to get more glue into the joint because the last thing you want is a dry joint. When you sand it, if you see a white line appear, it's a dry joint. So there we go, see if we can get that pegged together there. And normally you wouldn't be able to do this with a normal model, but this because this has got all the ribs and the stiffers and everything inside, it's okay. But normally it would it would squeeze. You you have the wing halves together like this. If you can imagine looking along, looking along the length here, basically like that. And if you put pegs so they're here and here, it tends to flatten it out. So you turn that shape into that shape, or it even opens up on the front. So you need to be a little bit careful there. And because I've done that side, so I don't forget, I'll do this side as well. And I'm not able to open that gap up at all. So just shows how strong everything is in here. Get some glue into that joint. Just like so. Make sure we go end to end. Get it all in there, see if we can give it a little squeeze and get... Yeah, nothing's moving at all, it's all so solid. It's been um, very well engineered, this kit. What's letting it down is the actual, the quality of the moulding itself. So I'm sure the mould tool, if the processing of the moulding was done perfectly, I think we'd end up with a perfect kit. But. Uh, with all this warpage and sink marks, no, not good. So around the back here we can glue these trailing edges together. It's just come in there, big old dollop of glue in there. You can see what I mean here, I can squeeze the wing here and it opens the joint up and that allows you to get more glue into the joint. Okay, so if you open the joint up and then just let it close, it will capillary along and then you'll get a nice strong, strong joint there. We can do the same here. We can open up this trailing edge here. We can really open it up there and get the glue in there. There we go. So there we are. I'm going to use a little clamp in here. Hold that together. Perhaps I should be able to clamp it there. Yeah, that's good. I'll get some glue on there, get a bit of glue on there. With a little clamp on there. There we go. Hold those together. I'm knocking the pegs off the wing now, that's the trouble. Right, so I'm actually knocking them out of that intake. So that's that side done. Pig on there, and then on this, we'll do the same on this side. As I say, give the wing a squeeze, it'll come apart. And then you can really get the glue in there. Get some up in there where the engine's going to be. Get some down in there. Get some there we'll get some in here don't forget the little bit in the middle so 
Now once again with our little oops, throw it across the room. Slightly larger one there. We grab this clamp off the floor, throw it across the room. Get that one in there. I think it one of these reverse close pegs on there. And I think I'll do the same over here. Okay, so that's that all done. So now we've only got this area here to look after, and that's all gone together beautifully. It's going to need a little sanding and blending because it's gone down. It's just a slight step in it. So what I might do is just build this up rather than lose all that engraved detail. So we'll come along here, we'll put some glue in the joint and let it go along. You see these, this glue pooling on the surface, if you don't touch it, it basically just disappears. If you try and rub it off or move it around with the brush or dry it out or anything, you like to leave marks. But on bare plastic, when there's no paint involved, doing this is absolutely fine. Okay, get that peg away from that edge because it'll capillary under there. There we go. Give that a little push. Perhaps get a peg here just to hold it. Again, making sure the peg doesn't touch the glue joint so that the glue doesn't capillary out. Just like so. And if I come around to the other side, I do the same again. And there we go. I must say, this is very impressive. I mean, I can grab this here and grab it here. And I can't flex it. It's absolutely solid. It is lovely. Uh, very, very strong. You're not going to get any sagging or anything. I just hope it's all nice and straight. But, uh, or the correct shape that it should be. And this plate on the front is going to work wonders for that twisting moment I had. So that's all glued together. Uh, we're going to let that go off. And then we'll come back and do some more sanding and what I'll do is I'll get all that sanding done and then I'll come back for part eight. If there's anything particular that I need to show you with the sanding and stuff then I will do at the beginning of part eight but I think it's just straightforward just I mean it's just literally I'm going to go over that with a sponge. It's, there's there's no step there's no there's a tiny tiny if you can see it there there's an absolutely the, the camera's focusing on that peg. Come on camera focus on my finger there we are there's a tiny tiny step there Take that peg away it's nothing so you know it's just going to be literally a wipe over the sander the panel lines all join up look on the top and bottom wings which is which is really nice to see so that's all cool <laughs> yeah it's um it really is a nice kit it's just my example i've got here has got some warpage and stuff in it which has given me some problems so We'll see how it comes out. As I say, the big thing is going to be that nose gear. The trouble is I've missed so much footage, I don't know what I've talked about. But um, I think probably this warpage around here is what gave me the issue initially with this, this um, nose gear. Because if you remember, it wasn't just the fact that it was sat one way. It was the fact that if I lined it up centrally, because it's in a radius, it was kind of rolling up. So I've had to sand loads from one side to get it go down. But if it was actually all warped, then it would have done that anyway. So it may be now that where I've sanded it, it's, got, it's going to come down on an angle. So, I mean, I, 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 I can put that in there. That's flat on the end. But there's no real... It kind of looks like it might be on an angle, to be honest. Let me get a rule. Let's get a rule and put across those two boxes there. Oh, no. It, it looks like it's square. So... Yeah, we'll see. It's, it's no big issue. Right, so we will uh, leave that to dry for a few hours. I'll go and do something else. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll call that a day for part seven. And then part eight, I'll be back and, and we'll get the tail and the nose on. There's going to be quite a bit of work to do to get the tail to fit, I think, because it's not a particularly good fit by the look of it. It looks like we've got quite a little seam there. So if you look here, we've got quite a quite a gap. So I think we'll do some sanding on there and get that all sharpened up. We'll sharpen up that corner in there and get it to go together with the least amount of gap as possible. So there we go. Troubles when you've got big gaps like that, you, you grow and miss the surface or whatever. It sinks in, you put some more and it sinks in. If you have a tiny gap, you just go over it once like I did here and it's job done. 
So um, anyway, I'll see you guys for part eight. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.